Good morning, everyone. Welcome into the Saturday Morning Coaches Show. And I've got a busy show about as busy as next week's going to be with all the district events that are going to take place. Uh, we've got uh, baseball, softball, and two soccer coaches here today. So we're going through a lot and in a quick time. And all of them have to be somewhere, it seemed like, pretty quick. So we're going to be moving along. But this week, well, one thing's going on at the high school. They're hosting the uh, UIL academic events. Uh, at Sulphur Springs High School this weekend. That's district competition. Wildcats Golf and Lady Cats Golf will be in district at Paris Country Club. That'll be Monday and Tuesday. Wildcat Tennis will be in district, and we're hosting that. That'll be at the Wildcat Tennis Center. That'll be Tuesday and Wednesday. And uh, Wildcat and Lady Cat Track, district competition, Royce City, Wednesday and Thursday. So a lot going on there. But we rush to uh, get into our interviews today because we've got a lot of ground to cover. And first with Jared Hammock, go Wildcats baseball, district ball game at Royce City last night, Coach. And uh, so uh, tell us uh, about how that win, it turned into a Royce City 8-4 win last night. Well, of course, it's <clears throat> not what we had hoped for. Uh, we really needed, felt like we needed to get over there and, and at least get one game out of the out of the series and just – it. Things just didn't go well from the get-go. Uh, probably on at least three occasions, we would get the first two guys out and then either give up a walk or a hit, and they'd end up scoring one or two, you know, with two outs and nobody on base. And then, and so we just did some things to hurt ourselves. They continued to swing the bat pretty well. They probably had nine hits uh, against our guys and just weren't spotting our pitches very well, uh, kind of all over the place. And then when we did bring it in there, they they hit it. Um, and then we're just not swinging a bat real well. We had three hits uh, wow. mm -hmm. against a kid that we faced the first time we played him. And historically, we do pretty well against a pitcher that we faced for the second time, but we didn't figure him out again. Most of our outs were somewhat easy plays for them, fly balls, weak ground balls. We just uh, we just didn't give ourselves much of a chance uh, for this game. We did – I did uh, – Jake Davis came in relief and, and I thought did a really, really good job. I think he gave up one earned run maybe in the last three or four innings. And uh, so that was good to see that, that uh, you know, we've got another pitcher maybe that we can go to uh, that can be effective. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, now two and five in district play. And, of course, uh, losing both games to Roy City this week, they sweep the series. But, uh, you know, now you, you, know, you still have four opponents, lots of uh, district games still to be played. I guess the way you look at it, you can just fold your tent and say, well, it's just not our season, or you, you know, try to turn this thing around and see if you can't land a playoff spot. Right, and then we kind of talked about that last night after the game. Uh, you know, it's nothing new to people to know that athletics is uh, kind of a metaphor for, for life. And, uh, you know, I just told them, I said, you know, we're getting kicked in the teeth right now, and life's going to do that to you. It's certainly done that to me. Um, and you can just, you know, lay down and take it, or you can get up off the mat and, and just move forward. And we're going to try to do that, you know, as long as we're mathematically alive, and we certainly are. Like I said, we have eight games left. We just have to, to just kind of get something good going. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just not playing very good baseball right now in any phase. Uh, we're not pitching well. We're not swinging the bats well, and we're certainly not helping our pitcher when they do put it in play defensively. I think we had three three more errors last night. Uh, you know, we're just we're just not playing well, yeah. and so we need something good to happen. Maybe you know, baseball is contagious. Both during one game, you know, one hitter gets a hit or two, it just kind of gets contagious. Unfortunately, so does the bad things. Yeah. Uh, but we just need something good to happen, and maybe moving forward, we can kind of. You know, get going like we did. You know, basically the first nine ball games of the year, we played really well. We're just we haven't gotten back to that point. So you really know that potential's there, and you've liked this group from the beginning. You know, the potential to do all those things that aren't being done right now, but you know they can do this. We've seen it. Absolutely, and it's certainly not from a lack of effort. Right. Uh, you know, we put in the practice time. Um, I think we do a good job at practice and. Uh, they want to, and they're good kids, and a good group to be around. It's just, just not 
uh, just not getting it done right now, just plain and simple. And uh, Roy City played really, really well this week. They, if I didn't know anything about their record, which I think is still an overall a losing record, like 10 and 12, uh, they look to be as good a hitting team as anybody in our district. I mean, yeah. they just are squaring the ball up really well right now. So it'll be interesting to see if they can continue it uh, next week against T High. But right now they're playing really well. And, and again, we're just not. So maybe getting a new opponent and not playing them anymore uh, may be, you know, good for us. Um, and, you know, today uh, it's a non district game against a really good opponent, but I'm kind of hoping to see if we'll just relax and play since it's not a district ball game. See if my theory is correct that maybe just we're a little bit too tense and worried in a district game. This game today is just a, you know, let's just go play and maybe we can play well and maybe it'll jump start us into next week. When are you supposed to play today? You're at McKinney North. We're at McKinney North, uh, an all-turf field. Uh, it's you know be really nice to play, you know, on those. Yeah. Uh, I, he told me this morning it's raining there, but it'll be gone by the time we get there, and it'll be ready to roll. So uh, another beautiful facility that we get to play at. You know, Roy City's all-turf. It's really nice, and so uh, McKinney North's a good team. They're a playoff team. They're at the top of their district, you know, close right now, and. I've known Jim a long time. He actually was an assistant at the University of Alabama many years ago. Hmm. And a uh, good coach, runs a good program, and, and we'll be tested today. But, and I hope we will rise up to that challenge. And, again, just maybe it's kind of – maybe it'll be a jump start. What time's first pitch? Uh, 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock, okay, at McKinney North. And uh, you know, talk about Roy City, you talk about Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, you know, they play us, they're 3-0. and o, They play everybody else, they're 0-4. Uh, they beat us, you know, the first game uh, in, in the round robin, and uh, then they proceed to lose four ball games. So, uh, you know, but they, they're world beaters against us. But, you know, it'll be interesting to see if they can take that momentum that they've had this week and see if they can do anything with it. They sure, you know, kind of stumbled out of the blocks after us. Yeah, I mean, I, again, if I didn't know any different, just watching them, they've got some big, strong-looking – uh, hitters and uh, they square the ball up as well as anybody we've played in quite some time. Like we talked about the other day, I don't know that I've been a, been a part of game in 25 years where somebody had legitimately 17, 18 hits like they did Tuesday night. I've yeah. just never seen it. Uh, and like I said, legit hits. I mean, they're just yeah. no one cheap, after no another, just points. squaring them. And uh, yeah. you know, they're playing really well right now. They got to feel good about themselves, and and we're kind of on the other end of that spectrum. You know, we're, we don't feel so good right now. Uh, but, again, I've just – the only way I know is, is just to maintain optimism, uh, to try to continue to work, uh, make our own luck, if you will. And, uh, you know, the law of averages says, you know, we have to take an upturn here pretty soon. And, and hopefully it's, it's sooner than later. Uh, I call this Roy City Week, so I'll, I'll dub the next one as Lindale Week for you. And uh, they will be uh, at uh, Wildcat Park on Tuesday, and then you will travel to Lindale. So these first two series has kind of been in disadvantage for the Wildcats, two games on the road and one game at home. But, uh, you know, that will all even out, I guess, over two years. And you do have some series coming up that you will have the uh, advantage, uh, a couple of teams we've seen at home so far. Uh, but uh, tell us about Lindale. They beat us a uh, real close ball game, seemed like a – 3-2, two, 2-1, two, kind of uh, they seem to have some pretty good pitching. They do. Uh, Rich does a good job with them. They competed really well. They had a, a really successful first tournament like we did in the, the, the Mike Carter <coughs> tournament. I think they uh, may have won all of their games possibly. And so they're good. They've got a pitcher going to Baylor. Now my understanding is he plays outfield, and maybe the last week he ran into somebody and hurt his leg, maybe an mm. ACL. He did not pitch. Uh, against Mount Pleasant either game. Mount Pleasant actually beat them. I, I don't remember the score, but they actually beat them pretty handily last night when he probably would have pitched, but he did not. So yeah. I don't know the long term of his injury, if he's not going to play again or if he'll be back for us. But, you know, he's a good pitcher. They, they've got some quality kids. They've got some college players that are, you know, going to different places. And uh, we always play them tough. We usually split with them in years past. And, uh, you know, we just, again, I, we just need to go back to playing the way we're capable. And I've always said, I can live with the results if we just play to our best. Right. And, and I'll let the chips fall where they may and be just fine. But right now, we're just not there. We're just yeah. not playing even our kind of best. I mean, we're just 
we're just not doing the things that it takes to play winning baseball. And, uh, and we're just not from a lack of working at it. It's not from a lack of trying. But we just got to get it going. I hope in a couple of weeks we'll talk about this. Say, man, can you believe we were in that funk back then? Boy, things are going so good now. I look forward to those kind of days. You and me uh, both. Coach, good luck at McKinney North today, and good luck next week against Lindale. And I, I know you'll turn this thing around. I, you've got a good team, and uh, I, I think they'll pick things up. Thank you. All right, that's our baseball report, and David Carrillo coming on to talk Lady Cat softball right after this. And back here on the Saturday Morning Coaches Show, <coughs> David Carrillo is with us now as we talk Lady Cats softball. They were in action last night. Very big ball game over in Mount Pleasant. Two 3-0 and o teams getting together. Uh, and again, uh, kind of a bittersweet for Coach Carrillo because he's got a good buddy across the other side of the field, Jeremy Tarrant. And, uh, and so, you know, but all that goes out the window. Those two competitors, you know, once they they're, have their game faces on and they're playing to win uh, that friendship stuff's nice but at the same time it's you know it's a good uh, healthy competition and uh, last night uh, did not go our way coach and and I never almost ever hear you say we couldn't hit but but uh, Lady Cat struggled with the bats last night yes we we definitely struggled offensively you know I uh, got three hits last night and uh, we just couldn't put nothing together just for whatever reason we just didn't hit the ball well and play well I thought uh, you know, we made a mistake early and gave up a run, an unearned run early in the game uh, and felt one to nothing. I still felt, you know, you still feel pretty good. But then in the third, uh, Jordan Nixon uh, hit a two-run homer in the third, and it put us up down by three. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed like the whole time we just kind of struggled of, of doing anything offensively. And, and, you know, those two mistakes, I think the two runs, of course, of the home runs were, were earned runs. And uh, they only had five hits themselves. So I, I thought Bailey Haggerty pitched a, a, a well enough to win. Uh, she pitched well. We just did not do anything offensively. And, and I'll be honest, those things happen. You hated that it happened last night. But, uh, you know, it, it's okay. We're, we're going to go and get back to work on Monday and, and go on. You know, you want to say you're going to win them all, but, you know, that's not realistic. But uh, I think our girls know we did not play well last night. And I, it'll be different when they come down here. Sure. Uh, and it seemed like there were some errors also for your Lady Cats. Yeah, we made a couple of boo-boos out there in the second inning. But, uh, again, it just it's, girls were trying to make plays. It, mm -hmm. And then when that happens, those things kind of happen. And, you know, it's just trying to make a play. And uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes in the game of softball, I guess. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, ups and downs. So I was telling you, I remember <clears throat> Uh, very good uh, Ayers, their pitcher from Mount Pleasant. We've seen her for three or four years, seems like. And and uh, last time I saw her pitch in Mount Pleasant, I think uh, you may have knocked her out in the first inning. Uh, you know, it just we just hit the ball real hard, scored maybe three or four runs, and and they they bring in another pitcher to try to stem the tide. So, you know. It's kind of the old, sometimes the bear eats you and sometimes you eat the bear. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, when you play a game and send those players out, you sometimes you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, and I was just looking back, just thinking about it last night. And, uh, you know, with this senior group that we have, you know, they're, they're guaranteed eight games with Mount Pleasant. And right now it's it's four and three them. So, you know, this series mm -hmm. has been pretty good the last three or four years. So, uh, you know, and I expected a tight game last night. Uh, I just wish we could have gave them our best. And, 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 we, and we, I don't feel like offensively we did. And I think our girls know that. But, you know, I think it kind of – sometimes you get those games where you're humble just a little bit and it kind of wakes you up. And I'm hoping that that's what's going to happen with our kids. And I, I know our kids are very resilient. And I, I feel like they're going to bounce back because uh, that's just the type of kids they are. So, uh, you know, that being said, we, we need to continue to – get back on track and try to win out and, and hey, let's y'all come down here and play. Let's see what you got and do it again. And, you know, if they beat us, they beat us. If not, you know, we just want to put our best foot forward. And I think last night as, as we were walking off the field, our girls felt like they knew we did not. And, uh, you know, like I said, when they come down here, I think it'll be different. Yeah, uh, you know, funny game, uh, softball sometime, you know, and just, uh, again, you just uh, never know what to expect. But uh, you, you do. Uh, well, let's uh, talk a little bit about what's uh, coming up this week. Uh, two home games. Uh, the main thing is uh, with a loss, this was the point I was trying to make. I was trying to dig it out of there. <laughs> it was a long night last night. But uh, you don't want this to linger, you know, the feeling that the team had leaving <coughs> Mount Pleasant. You don't want that to turn into another loss and another loss, you know, in yes. the losing streak. You want to. Uh, you, you want to remember what you did wrong and try to correct it, but you don't want it just to 
overwhelm you. Yes, and I, I think last night was a really good learning experience for us, even though we fell short. And, you know, my hat's off to them because they, they they did what they had to do to win last night, mm -hmm. and, and we did not. You know, they were the best team last night. But but I think we learned from it, and I think the learning experience from that's definitely going to carry over. Uh, you know, I think we can get sometimes complacent in how we practice and mundane on the things that you do every day. But, uh, you know, I, I try to preach to these girls, and I think we all forget about it, is we need to have a spirit of excellence. We need to be the best we, uh, best you you can be every day. And, and sometimes uh, you kind of forget that with the grind. You know, you just try to get through it. You just try to survive. So I, I think this was a good wake-up call for us, and I, I think we'll have a better practice next Monday. I promise you that. And uh, I think that we will uh, – I think we'll learn from it, and, and that, that's all you can ask is just to learn from what, what you're doing. That's life. You know, it didn't go our way. We can sit there and have a pity party and point fingers, but that's not the way these kids are, and that's not the way I am. So we're just going to get back on the horse and start riding again and, uh, you know, do what we got to do to get better. I know as you looked at the schedule, you kind of looked at the, the three games in a row. You had Lindale there. You had Mount Pleasant there and then T high coming in on Tuesday night uh, here and uh, you you know kind of mark that as man some really critical games here you got by Lindale we lose to Mount Pleasant and here comes Texas high and and uh, apparently they have improved a great deal since last year. yes coach Hatfield does a great job with those girls uh, you know he lost his big pitcher uh, from you know she graduated early but uh they, he always finds a way to just put something together and be very competitive so uh you know they're, they're still playing well and uh we need to be able to get after it. they're not just going to lay down for us uh you know looking at the schedule and, and i'll be honest as I, as I looked at the beginning of the week i knew we had the two tough road games and uh you know if we split I actually, in my mind, I thought in my mind I could deal with it because it, those are two tough places to play in, in Mount Pleasant and Lindell. And uh, we were able to get at least a split. And, uh, you know, coming back home is, is going to be refreshing for our girls. And, and, and we need it, and I think they need it. But, uh, again, I, I feel like uh, we'll bounce back and uh, get back mm -hmm. on what we need to do. But uh, we do expect, you know, every game is different, and, and you got to compete. And if you don't, Again, like I said, lessons learned that last night. You know, we, we've got to be able to play and we've got to be sharp and we've got to find a way to figure out how to get things done. And again, my, my hat's off to that girl, Avery. She pitched uh, uh, well last night. We yeah. just, you know, we just didn't hit and uh, we will hit next time. So yeah. that's just the way it is, just the way you got to look at it. It's one of those games. We're all greedy and, uh, you know, you say, well, yeah, we can win one and lose one. But once you win <clears throat> one, you want to win two. That's right. That's You're why the right. people bring the brooms at the ballpark uh, on Sunday, you know, after they win the first two. They might have said, yeah, we can take two out of three. That'd be great. But then you win two and you say, heck no, I want to sweep. I want to win. Yeah, I, and you get like that. And, and, you know, I do get like that sometimes, too, because, you know, we talk about playing for something more and, uh, and things like that, but sometimes you do get caught up in, in the pressure of winning. And, and, and if you, you know, I, I think you win every time you go out there because one, you're playing, and two, you're going to win because you're going to learn. Even if it doesn't come out in the scoreboard, you're going to learn something from that game, which I thought we did uh, last night. So uh, that it is what it is. But uh, you know, I still always challenge our girls to have a spirit of excellence that we we have to do better and be our best you you can be. And you know. That's, that's what we're going to do, and that's what we're going to do on Monday and uh, get back to focusing in on the little things and, and, and go back and play. Uh, this game by no mean is, means is a death sentence. It, it happens. Those things happen. We go on. And, heck, I'm smiling this morning. And again, when we get done from here, I'm going to go do some opening ceremonies, go hang out with my wife, and enjoy the weekend. And, you know, I hope our girls do the same thing because, again, this is a game. We're going to go on, and we're going to do fine. We'll, we'll be fine the rest of the way. Yeah, if you get by Texas High on Tuesday, four and one, that would be a pretty good uh, first <coughs> half. And uh, with all that second half left, and uh, just hope to catch fire and uh, kind of delight that. Uh, you two home games this week. You've got Texas High on Tuesday, and then you begin the second half with Royce City. They were supposed to be one of the best teams in the district, and the Metroplex had a mm -hmm. great record. They were ranked over there and all that and among the local teams. And, uh, you know, we beat them once, but they will definitely uh, bring it. Uh, oh, oh yeah. Come it, in on it, Friday. It, it's going to be a challenge the rest of the way. Well, but we have set a goal. I mean, I told them last night, I said, you know what? We're, we're going to set our goal. Well, we're going to win out until we get to Mount Pleasant, and then we're going to see what happens, and then we're going to try to win out the whole thing. And I, I think these girls will respond. Uh, last year we had the big hick hiccup with Hallsville, and we were fighting just to stay to be a district champion. You know, th this by far is not over. So uh, we, we're going to – Go back and go back to work, and uh, and like I said, we know it's a tough road, but 
it's a challenge, and, and we should be, you know, relishing in that because, uh, you know, that that's what makes life fun. You know, it, it's not fun beating somebody twenty nothing. Though you kind of like those field game good field games sometimes, but it, it, it's it's competitiveness. It's it's just what what do we have in our tank? Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I feel like our team, and I have a lot of confidence in our kids that they have a lot left in the tank. And and they were disappointed as they should be about last night. Now I was too, but uh, you know, life goes on. And again. Spirit of excellence, let's go. What do we got? What are we going to do today? How are we going to get better? And that's what we need to look at. All right, Coach, enjoy your opening ceremonies. That's always a big day for oh, yeah. softball around here in it, town. It and uh, uh, enjoy that and uh, uh, the w- whole weekend. And, and go get them uh, beginning next week. Oh, yeah, we're ready to go. Come out and watch. They're, they're a great group of kids to watch and a great place, place to watch a softball game. Yeah, two, two home games this week, Tuesday and Friday. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. Soccer report coming up. Uh, Joel Bailey is here. Alexi Upton is here. And we'll talk with both of them right after this. Back here on the Saturday Morning Coaches Show, Joel Bailey is with us now. He's the Lady Cats uh, head soccer coach. And uh, they had by district last night against a foe that they know only too well, Hallsville. And I kind of, you know, I kind of got the impression they fell behind early and then kind of settled in and, and played a lot better. Uh, but they're, they're a, a very good team. Absolutely. They win three to nothing. Absolutely. Um, yeah, some shuffling going around in that district uh, there of late. And, uh, you know, we were slated to play Jacksonville and had it all lined up and ducks in a row and the site and the referees and just all the uh, ins and outs and logistics of the game. And then lo and behold, uh, Jacksonville uh, lost their final district game and relinquished the uh, number one seed. And Hallsville was do what they do best. You know, they, they find ways to win and they were ended up being the district champ. And so uh, we squared off with them last night and um, Yes, Hallsville is uh, an extremely talented team from top to bottom. Uh, just they can throw a lot at you in a hurry. Uh, a lot of speed up top defensively. Um, you know they, they showed some signs of weakness. Unfortunately, we just couldn't capitalize on it. Coach Erickson does a phenomenal job over there. Uh, totally have respect for him and uh, just what he's done in Hallsville that program. This is their third district championship in a row over there hmm. uh, within our old district and now this new district. So uh, he's got uh, a dynamic player in uh, Evan, number six, uh, who's kind of their go-to person. And uh, uh, she's uh, lightning in a bottle. Hmm. Uh, just uh, open it up and just she can let it fly. She can dribble. She can take people on. She's just – can pass the ball, slot it in, and uh, she can definitely finish. And we saw that again last night. So uh, hats off to Hallsville. You know, I wish them well in the playoffs. They uh, they were the better team last night, and uh, that's just how it goes this time of year when you get into the playoff season. Yeah. I think about some of the – you were talking about what a, what a good uh, player that they had uh, in Hallsville. And I think about some we've seen this year, that Hurst uh, that was with Melissa – and uh, man, those uh, talented duo from uh, Royce City, and I noticed they took care of business. I think on a Thursday night, and won six to nothing. So they look like they're really cooking too. Correct. Royce City got out. They beat uh, Nacogdoches uh, six to nothing, and um, Mount Pleasant had a favorable victory against White House. They uh, they won four zero, and then uh, T High went down to Jacksonville two to one. So it must have mm. been a pretty close game. So. Uh, we still have some district representatives in the playoffs, and you know we wish them well. It makes us all look better, um, you know. But they're going to come into some formidable foes in the second round game. And uh, the Roy City's got Joshua, which you know Roy City's high powered enough. You know they they might jump on Joshua early and expose yeah. their weaknesses. And um, Mount Pleasant's playing a very very good North Forney team. I uh, mm. saw the result. I was shocked that Midlow did not win that game, but. Uh, yeah, Mount Pleasant's going to have their hands full, but, you know, uh, Coach Hernandez, you know, he's only graduating two seniors, so he's got a lot of depth on that team. And mm. you just never know this time of the year, um, the, the the Cinderella's jump up out of nowhere and they're the bracket busters. And uh, it, a lot of things happen early on in soccer in the playoff uh, system. So it, it could be the year that, you know, one of our district schools you know, makes a pretty good run at it. 
Well, Joel, uh, you certainly deserve uh, uh, some uh, seasons where uh, the injury bug kind of stays away. You've been uh, head coach for a couple of years now and just decimated by terrible, terrible injuries. And I'm not talking about just injuries, but we're talking about stuff that sets people out for, you know, long stretches of time. And so, you know, they say it all evens out. Man, it's got to come around for you because you've really had the, you know, a, a bad situation the last couple of years with injuries. Yeah, just but a, a true testament to the girls, you know, and just uh, trusting the system that we have in place and uh, just working hard and trying to get stronger and faster. And, uh, uh, yes, we have had uh, our fair share of lumps with injuries and key injuries to, to the right, wrong personnel, unfortunately. But, um, you know, it just shows their perseverance and uh, just uh, their approach to the game and their love and passion for soccer. Not necessarily just me, but, you know, just the game that they love, that they've been playing ever since childhood. So, um, yeah, it would be nice to kind of escape the uh, the self-infliction of injuries and whatnot. But um, it's just part of the game. It is a rough game. It, yeah. it, it, it's very uh, – uh, grueling on the body. It's very uh, mentally stressful. It, 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 it's not just uh, a pickup game, you know, in a city park. It, it, it can get intense. You put yourself in pressure situations and you see how you rise out of it. So uh, it, it's a long season. We have a grueling off season before we're really competitive. So um, it's just the nature of the game. It, it, it can be overwhelming if you let it. Yeah, uh, people would be shocked, I think, if they really got a close look and realized what a physical game girls play. They think, oh, well, you know, they wouldn't do that. But, I mean, they get out there and mix it up. Yeah, um, some of our games at times get a little out of control, whether it's, you know, I'm not speaking negatively about officials, but sometimes some let them play more than others and they test the waters. Sure. And sometimes lines get crossed that don't need to be crossed. And, um but yes, the girls game can get pretty physical in a hurry if it's not taken care of and managed well by both coaches and or the officials. But um, that's neither here nor there. You know, we just got to focus on uh, what we can control, which is our side of the thing, uh, the game. And, uh, you know, moving forward, um, there's a lot of youth on this team within this program. There's some younger girls uh, in the middle school that are currently uh, working hard. Uh, outside of their parameters to, uh, you know, make an impact. And, uh, you know, we'll be young, but um, I, I think this year with experience of playing some really strong 6A programs and very strong 5A programs early on just kind of gave us an early testament of what we were made of. And, you know, you want to win a lot of games, but at the same sense, you, you don't want to book too easy of a preseason and then just get flat out destroyed in districts. So, uh, moving forward, you know, there, there's a lot to build on. You know, we, we wish the seniors well in all aspects of life. You're either opening or closing a chapter. Uh, so, again, um, I'm going to miss this uh, current senior class. You know, I've literally coached them all uh, the four years that they've been here as students and, um, you know, from a JV level on into a varsity level and uh, just a unique dynamic group. and. Uh, uh, definitely going to miss them, but you know, looking forward, uh, there, there's a lot of positives, and if we can just all unite them together, uh, you know, we'll we'll have a better showing, and the talent's coming. All right. Well, best of luck in the future, and Thank you, Don. Uh, it's, it's nice to hear that, you know, that uh, have a rosy uh, future ahead, and uh, got players coming up, and yes, sir. and ones that got a lot of experience this year out on the field. Joel, thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to continuing to work with you and. Uh, and uh, hang in there. Thank you, Don. You're a good man. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Alexi Upton coming up next, and uh, we'll talk about Wildcat soccer. They had a whale of a game last night. Went to penalty kicks, and uh, and it was close in that, too. So we'll talk about Wildcat soccer when we come back. And we're with Alexi Upton now. He's the head soccer coach uh, for the Wildcat soccer team. Took on a very, very good Jacksonville team last night, 22 and four, only four losses this year. And uh, I, honestly, I thought the Wildcats tied those guys in knots last night, frustrated the heck out of them. Seemed like every time they kicked, one of your players was uh, getting a block, and, and that takes some effort to, to have that ball bounce off you that hard from a ball kicked real hard close by. 
and just over and over again, guys uh, blocking shots and just, you know, taking the ball off their feet and all kinds of stuff. Uh, you had to be just uh, overjoyed with the way your team played defense last night, Coach. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we played incredible defense, uh, great effort in the game. Uh, there wasn't a moment in the match where I thought, you know, we weren't playing well. Uh, you know, we were always playing well. Um, you know, when I first stepped in the program, you know, the biggest thing I was focusing on is, hey, we got to improve our, got to improve our effort. We've got to, you know, be able to go compete with top teams. And I think over the course of this year, we've done that. Uh, we found a way to compete with top teams, and you know, I'm just really proud of this group. So. Yeah, just uh, just an amazing effort. And so many games we've seen, you know, when you kind of get, it, it's obvious. Sometimes you just get a mismatch. You know, you, you get a team that's just so much better than you are. And they just control the ball. You never see the ball. You never hardly get over across midfield. I didn't get that feeling last night. Your team really controlled the ball great uh, lengths of time, took the ball down there all around the Jacksonville goal and uh, made things happen. Uh, you know, could had some close calls here and there. But it wasn't by any stretch of the imagination a one-sided soccer game. They have to feel very, very fortunate that they're moving on today after – after what we hit them with. Yeah, um, my West Mesquite's coach called me. They, they will play in the second round, and he said that Jacksonville said that they were shocked at what they saw. Uh, you know, I think they kind of thought that it was maybe going to be an easier first-round match. And, you know, my guys have grown, and they, they've gotten a lot better. They work a lot harder. Um, they, don't, they don't back down from challenges, um, and that's great. You know, we're only graduating four people. Uh, you know, we're going to return with that energy and that enthusiasm and that effort, and – and we're going to get better. And then once we get better, you know, I think a lot of results are going to come our way. I think next year is a really exciting year for us um, because once we get better and grow, I think having some experience, all the experience that we gained this year, I think it's going to be a really exciting year for us next year. So. Yeah, a uh, good, uh, good uh, group of guys. I mean, you always hate, you know, losing those seniors, but that's just the way it is. And I've seen 10 or 11 soccer players uh, graduate, you know, not graduate that night, but you know, have a senior night, which you know that those guys are finishing up playing. They're not going to come back. But, you know, I mean, you four that you're losing, really, really great guys, keys to the team and all that kind of stuff. But uh, just an enormous, I mean, you start 11, so mm -hmm. you figure even if those four are starters, you've got seven guys out there that uh, that are really, you know, going to bring it for you. you got to, you know, you got to like. And you had some young players that really made some great strides this year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. we got some young players. Uh, Omar Hernandez. Uh, Phenomenal player. He's really growing into himself. Uh, DJ is a sophomore as well with Omar. Uh, he's a captain for us. Um, he just does everything right, everything we ask, and just a great work ethic, great leader. Um, you know, you know, we pulling some goals. A junior, he'll be a senior next year. Um, he's incredible. Left everything out on the game. Made tons of saves in the game. Uh, you know, we got a lot of guys that are really stepping into their own. And you know, I told the guys, you know, hey, you know, we love the four seniors. Love them up. Tell them thank you. Um, but at the end of the day. You know, let's let's take this chunk away for a second and turn and look at everything else. I go, there's still 30, 40 deep in this program that we've got to work with. I go, so you know, don't don't be discouraged. Be excited because you know there's so much in front of us. And you know, I, I think our kids are very excited for you know what we can do next year. And you know, as for this year, you know, just couldn't get the PKs to go our way. And you know, we played incredible. I really couldn't ask for any more. Our kids did phenomenal. And uh, you know. It's just it is what it is, and you know, really wanted to get our playoff win, but you know, hope it comes it comes in another year, I guess. So. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. Sometimes you have to wait for that kind of stuff, and sometimes a loss, you know, will really focus the team for the next year. We we hear it all the time when somebody says, "Man, we don't want to be there again." You know, we want to move on. We want to start picking up some wins and that. And and you know, against Mount Pleasant, we really kind of looked overmatched on the PKs. Mm -hmm. You know, they. I think they made. We made maybe one. It was like three or four to one, something like that. But last night, it was. Uh, it was. Mm -hmm. yeah, I could tell you. You must have worked a lot on your PK Please. in practice because those guys looked uh, much more natural and uh, putting that ball in the net. Yeah, we uh, we uh, worked it all this week and worked it all last week. Uh, we just end on it, do it for about 10, 15 minutes, um, and it it helped. It showed. You know, um, but PKs are just one of those things that you know it's not like a you know, a free throw or a field goal in football or anything like that, you know, you can't practice on it. And, you know, if you practice a lot, you're going to be really efficient at it. 
you know, they're just they're just PKs, you know, and yeah. you know you can make them or you can not make them. You can have your best guy that makes everything. He could miss, you know. You just you really just never know. I mean, keeper guesses right or you play a bad ball. I mean, you just don't know. It's it's, it's fate, it's chance, it's a little bit of everything. So, um, you know, it is what it is. It was a great it was a good run, and you know we played phenomenally well. And I think going forward, we look really exciting next year in district. Um, you know, Greenville was all seniors. So, you know, it's going to be maybe some rebuilding time for them. Yeah. Uh, you know, Roy City was a lot of seniors, so maybe it's some rebuilding time for them. Um, you know, Lindell's kind of the same as us, about a good mix. Um, you know, T High was a lot of seniors, and they were at the bot towards the end. Um, you know, a lot, you know, Mount Pleasant's going to be Mount Pleasant. They're always going to be pretty, pretty good. But, you know, we got to like our chances, you know. Um, a lot of people leave and get rid of players, and we get to keep everybody. Um, you know, so yeah. exciting time. You know, even even a lot of big teams in around the area oh, were very senior heavy. You know, you know, Midlothian was senior heavy. Jacksonville had a lot of seniors. Um, you know, uh, John Tyler had a lot of seniors. Um, so you know, we're we're looking good. We're looking exciting, and you know, our future is bright. So. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, I thought Noe Ponce, uh, he really gave you everything he had. Uh, I know he wasn't right, you know, he wasn't 100%. Uh, he did, he looked a little better better than he did at the end of that Mount Pleasant game that we saw he, where he was just, he, get, he ex expended everything he had. Mm. But, I mean, and what a super save he had right near the end mm -hmm. uh, there. Absolutely. Where he just leap, you know, dives to the side and directs mm -hmm. that ball, you know, gets enough of it to keep it out of the net. And uh, I can tell you from having all the Jacksonville fans right under us, mm -hmm. they, that uh, that was a play got them really excited, and yeah. and uh, until it got blocked. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, he's he's phenomenal. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be real honest with you, no secrets. Uh, we actually took him off playing goalie at the start of the year. You know, just I don't know, his mind wasn't all there. Everything wasn't all great. You know, his work ethic wasn't that great. And then, you know, then he came back to me and said, Hey, you know. You know, I need to play, and I, I want to play, and I'm going to prove to you that I need to play. And, and he's done that, and he's done an incredible job of that. And you know, so early on, you know, it was a, it was a little bit of a struggle for him, and you know, he's just grown into such a competitor and such a uh, hard worker, and you know, basically a leader of this group. You know, he's a phenomenal player, and we're excited to have him. And like you said, he's not 100% healthy. You know, he's got some, uh, you know, knee, you know, some type of ligaments problems that we're going to have to sort out, and you know, hopefully he doesn't need any, you know, serious surgeries or anything like that, but. Um, he's gonna take some. He needs some time to recover and, and fix himself. And um, but you know, like I said, great, great time for us. And we're only gonna grow. and We're gonna get better. And like I said, when I walked in the program, you know, the things that I really wanted to work on was we need to be able to compete with great teams. Uh, you know, we our work ethic's got to get better. We can't just you know quit and accept defeat. Um, and uh, you know, both of those things, I think we've done a great job at. You know played against great teams like Greenville, Mount Pleasant, and Lovejoy, and, and Jacksonville, and those are, you know, high area teams, and, and we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with every single one of them. Uh, you know, we didn't get, you know, we didn't get embarrassed this year. We finished with a, a above 500 record, um, you know, so it was a good, it was a good year for us, and, you know, it's, it's building blocks to where we need to go, so very excited for us. All right, let's take our last internal break. We'll come back with just a question or two, wrap everything up here, and with Alexi Upton right after this. Back here on the Saturday morning coaches show with Alexi Upton, Coach. What do you tell your team after a game like that? Um, you know, you we go just, to them individually. Uh, you know, we went to a couple guys individually and just you know thank, <coughs> thank them for their effort and their hard work and their you know determination and things like that. Um, but just collectively as a group, you know, we talked about a couple things. First thing we talked about is you know just giving us 110. You know, I think we did a great job of that. Um, I think we're doing every day. We're getting better at doing that. Um, and then, like I said, you know, the thing earlier where, you know, I, I, I stood with the seniors with, behind me and out of the way, and then I said, hey, look, now look around you. And, you know, we're incredibly young. There's 30, you know, there's, you know, I brought a lot of people just to, you know, hang along. I'm sure you saw that. And, you know, I looked at, I said, look around. I go, there's, there's 30 people in this program, 10 or, 10 or 12 back home. I go, you know, we've got a ton of guys in this program that, you know, are freshmen, sophomores, juniors. Um, we'll move on to seniors, juniors, and sophomores. Uh, you know, we're very young. We're still very young. Even next year when we graduate 10, we'll still be really young, you know. So we're a very young group. And, um, you know, the fact that we did so well as such a young group is, is impressive. I mean, nobody starts four seniors like I – I mean, four sophomores like I do. Uh, nobody plays freshmen like I do, um, you know. Uh, so it, 
it's an exciting time for us, and I think we're just going to get better. And there's a lot of JV kids that are very exciting, so it's a good time for us. Your high school coach, Colby Peak, uh, what what was his demeanor when, after a loss, and when, or the last loss? Uh, what was his approach uh, to just when come I, come around? I, when I was a player, yeah, when oh. you were playing, um, you know, kind of the same thing. You know, he kind of just came around and and congratulated everybody. You know, thank you for your great year and. You know, he said, uh, you know, and I said it to my kids as well, you know, hey, I love you. You know, you know I'm very proud of you. you know, I love the way you fight and I love the way you work. And, uh, you know, we're we're very proud of that. And, you know, we're going to keep building that. We're going to keep growing that. We're going to keep working. We're going to keep trying to get better. And I think once our talent starts getting a little better, we're going to see incredible results uh, because our heart and our efforts getting a lot is, you know, 110 percent now. And, and, you know, like I said, getting into the program, that was what I wanted to fix. That's what I wanted to change. And I think I've done a good job of it. And so uh, I think going forward, once our talent gets better, you know, a lot of exciting things are going to come our way. So. Yeah, uh, Colby, he learned uh, from Andy Holt. And I was down there several times at the end of the season, and Andy would go to each individual player, you know, and they always had tears in their eyes. They were always so disappointed. And yet he, you know, would build them up. And uh, it was just an inspirational thing to mm -hmm. see. And, uh, uh, you know, it's a team that you guys, you've been with these guys, and, you know, you fought a lot of battles. And uh, uh, your first team uh, as a head coach, uh, you, 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 won't, you won't forget these guys. Yep. Or the shirt just for, just for today because of it. And, you know, I, you're absolutely right. I won't forget it. Um, it was a great group and just ready to keep, keep building, keep growing. I would imagine some district coaches are going, man, we thought we might get a break over there at Sulphur Springs, but Dad Gummit, they look like they've hired a good one. So. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I think stirring them up. I, I think to start, I think to start district in uh, preseason predictions, I think we were uh, we were fifth. Hmm. Uh, they thought, you know, we graduated a lot of people last year, and I, I think they just thought, you know, we didn't really have anything in the in the farm. You know, we didn't have anything growing in the farm, uh, but we do, uh, and we're very talented, and we're very exciting, and we're very young. Um, you know, I'm about, I'm about to start working on middle school coming up in the next few weeks, and I get to see all those kids too. And so, you know, we've, we're just going to keep getting better and better. So, yeah, good times for us. And I know it was important to you not to finish fourth. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd kind of gotten stuck where we were kind of in that fourth spot. Yeah. And, he, and you were happy to, or happier, I say, because mm -hmm. you, you're hardly ever satisfied. <laughs> you're always wanting to get it done yesterday, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to try to improve the program. And that's great. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the, you were you were glad to get in that third spot rather than yeah. four. You know, I talk to our kids all the time about taking baby steps. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, I reference basketball all the time. You know, mm -hmm. me and Sip are, are great friends, and I, re I reference basketball all the time. I go, guys, you know, yeah, they went to the regional. You, you know, they won regional tournament. And they went to state this year. I go, but you know, Sips is on his sixth year, his seventh year. You know, I go, he's endured a lot, and they've taken baby steps. Mm -hmm. They've taken tons of baby steps to getting to where they can go to state and they can be a successful program. I go, so we've got to just take baby steps. It's one baby step at a time. Yeah. And, you know, that that was a baby step for us. You know, we were in fourth for the past two years. Um, you know, so our baby step is we got into third, mm -hmm. you know. And for in the past two years, they've struggled to play against big teams. They've been getting dominated against big teams. Our baby step this year was we're competing with big teams. Maybe not winning them, but competing with them. Uh, you know, so we're taking baby steps in all of our aspects, and you know, hopefully next year ours our, is our is our leap. You know, right? kind of like a track run. You know, now let's leap into the sand and let's go let's go get some more things. So, yeah, I was telling Cipolletta, you know, the last couple of years we we kept in advancing one round at a time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said, man, you keep that up, you're gonna you know be at the top. And he said, yeah, but not fast enough. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of his approach. Yeah. And and I know you're a lot like that too. You, yeah. But at the same time, you, you do enjoy the, the baby steps as they come, and, yeah. and you kind of understand you're building the program, and you have to do it your way. Yeah, you know, you, talk, you, know, you said uh, you, you seem like you're never satisfied. And, you know, I, you know, I really love the steps that we've taken, but, I, you know, I, you're absolutely right. You know, I'm not, I'm not satisfied because I know that we can take more. You know, if, if, I, knew, if I knew that that's all it was and that's it, it is what it is, and then, you know, like last night, you know, okay, fine, you know, we'll, we'll accept that. But, you know, we can always do more. We can always get better. And, you know, so I, I'm just expecting bigger and better things next year. And I think we will achieve that. So, Well, having done that game last night, I was very, very proud of that Wildcat mm -hmm. team and the yeah. way they played and told some of the players that as I, on the way out as mm -hmm. I would see them because, uh, I, you know, I really respected what they did out there. And, uh, 
And uh, so, uh, you know, I'm very, very impressed with them and the way they played. They represented our high school very, very good yep. yesterday. Yep, yes, absolutely. I said, you know, one of the things I talked about before we stepped onto the field was about how intense playoff games are. They get crazy, they get wild, and, you know, as you clearly saw last night, they get really high, high energy, high speed, and a lot of effort goes into the game. But then I also talked about, hey, you know, remember what you're, you're out here for. You know, you're here to represent, you know, that, that program badge that's on your chest. You're here to represent your friends in this program, and you're here to represent your family and your community. Um, you know, and that's what really matters. And, uh, you know, I think everybody that really, you know, fired everybody up, you know, they were like, you know, well, let's go do this for, you know, the people that come out and support us and take care of us. So, absolutely. It was a good, good year for us, and, you yeah. know, we're going to move forward and we're going to get better, and good things are going to come our way. I don't doubt it. Yep. Uh, Coach, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to work with you this year. Yes, and sir. Maybe we'll find a way to sneak you back in the booth sometime. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, sir. Enjoy your work there, too. Thank you. And uh, that's uh, going to wrap it up. I've been a full day today and uh, had been a lot of fun. Enjoyed it. And uh, thank you so much for joining us on this uh, Saturday for the Coaches Show. I'm Don Julian. So long, everybody.